Hello there and welcome to this quick overview or a demonstration of uh, the hardware development course for software engineers. Now, one of the things I ran into was when we are trying to do embedded systems development or trying to write code for it, people are often confused as to, hey, how much of the hardware do I need to know? And so this is my attempt to address that question, which is uh, knowing digital circuits and a little bit about analog circuits will give you that confidence to reason about uh, the hardware related things when you're working with embedded systems, when you're programming the embedded systems. So then, yeah, let's dive in and take a look at this quick demo. Now, what we have here on the, on the top view of this camera uh, is, uh, this is the icebreaker board. This is one of the FPGA boards and what FP FPGA is, I will come to that in a minute. Uh, but the idea is that we've got some buttons here, we've got some LEDs here, then there are some LEDs here in this area, and then there are a lot of GPIO pins. There are general purpose input output pins. And then at the center here is something called FPGA, which stands for Field Programmable Gate Arrays. And you know what that is, it'll just make sense in a bit. And this is then like an FTDI chip that converts the USB packets coming from here to the programmable commands and you know goes ahead and programs the FPGA. All right, so what is an FPGA? Let's answer that question first. So the idea is that digital electronics or digital uh, electronics is based on the idea of ones and zeros and essentially you know Boolean, Boolean logic. And then using Boolean logic, we have something called logic gates. And using these logic gates, we make digital circuits. So one of the ways in which you can actually implement digital circuits is to have like a breadboard uh, with integrated circuits that implement different gates, which is the AND gate, OR gate, NOT gate, you know, NAND, XOR, so on and so forth. So you get individual ICs, integrated circuits, you could put them on the breadboard and these are like two breadboards and then you know connect the wires together and then go about actually you know injecting one volt or five volts to change the state from zero to one all of that now what happens is fpgas uh, are essentially a solid state version of this breadboard and let me elaborate a little bit so you can think of fpgas like so that they are uh, lego blocks they have lego blocks let's say so inside of an fpga and this is like a very simplified uh, view of an fpga but um, uh, things are a little more complex uh, complicated and we'll come to that you know much later um, as part of the formal course we'll spend some time on understanding the gates but the idea is that we have got too many of these gates uh, within that chip and they are all so to speak not connected and then the idea is that hey you know there is a memory which dictates uh, like there is let's say a grid like this and then the idea is okay which line of this grid connects to which line so there you can imagine that there is a routing uh, related mechanism some switch boxes inside and based on what values we have in the memory uh, different connections are tied together the net effect is that if you have uh, a circuit of this nature let's say and you wanted like an LED here and you wanted to switch here. So the idea then is that you can deploy this on an FPGA and the FPGA has a lot of GPIOs and then you can have the switches connected to some of the GPIOs and you can have LED connected to one of the GPIOs and then essentially you can let's say have your circuit routed something like so. So that's the idea. So what we then do is the code or the model that we write, when we compile it and send it over to the FPGA, the FPGA actually implements this hardware, which is very different from uh, a CPU. A CPU is a fixed machine that reads memory one at a time, one you know, instruction at a time, and then goes ka-chunk, 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 you know, step by step. It reads the states, maintains the states, and then modifies the states. And that's how like a 
CPU works, but this is not a CPU. This is like literally the digital circuit. So on this side, you have the inputs and the inputs are, you know, the processing happens instantly. And then the output straight up appears. So we are talking about digital circuits here. And once you kind of can program an FPGA and deploy your own digital circuits, you can then slowly venture into implementing communication protocols. You can go ahead and implement your own hardware, so to speak. And once you have this background, you know, the fear of the hardware part of embedded system kind of goes away or you feel at peace with it. So what I want to do now is show you like a demo, uh, deploy a circuit, so to speak. And um, what we have here on the screen is this software called iStudio. And we'll talk about again how to download, you know, connect and all of that in the formal course. But uh, the, the FPGA here that you see on the screen, the board, that has lattice uh, ice 40 line of FPGA. And uh, this software is essentially an open source software that we can use to program it. Now, what we'll do is we'll start off with graphical way of making a circuit and then slowly as part of the course, uh, we'll dive into writing the circuit. And yes, we write the circuit, meaning that we describe it in a textual format using languages that are called the hardware description languages, things like Verilog and BHDL. So then what I'm going to do now is first off in the board, uh, you'll notice that I have selected icebreaker, which is same as the board that we see in the video here, video feed. And so this software then understands what pin is connected to what on this board. Uh, so what I'm then going to do uh, is essentially take an input and I'm saying that it's, let's say, uh, you know, uh, I1, which is input one, and it's an FPGA pin. Okay, so I put it here, then I go to, uh, you know, uh, basics, input, and then I say input two. And then let me just put it here. Now what I'm going to do is on the side here, uh, I come to this default, then go to logic, gates, and let me choose um, the NAND gate, just randomly, right? So I place the NAND gate here, and then I'll go to basic and put like an output, and then say LED, uh, then put it here. Now the names can be anything, right? The idea is um, that, you know, we are going to create this circuit which has two inputs, one output, a NAND gate essentially. So I'm going to then uh, connect uh, the output of one to the input of another. And uh, this is then essentially a complete circuit. Now what you see here is the null that we need to replace uh, with different elements on the board different pins on the board and this software already knows what is what so just you know trust your faith here and trust me that button one is going to be this button here and button two is going to be the one below that so let me then go ahead and select button one and button two so these are the two buttons physical pins from which the voltage will be induced voltage will be sensed and those voltage levels will be treated like a one or a zero all right, so now we go ahead and in the LED one, we map it to, uh, let's say, LED uh, red, right? And once I have kind of, so to speak, drawn my circuit here, I'm going to click on this bottom button which says upload. And what you'll notice is it's creating an image that it wants to send over to the FPGA. And yes, it has uploaded. And it kind of also says that at the bottom. Let me go ahead and do that again. Right, so it is start upload. And once the upload is finished, uh, right, it says upload done. Now is the interesting piece. And uh, the thing then is, if I were to place, you know, both of them, we have the LED on. So if I just press one button, nothing happens. I press another one, nothing happens. If I press both of them, the LED goes off. I mean, turns on rather. All right, so what is going on? That doesn't look like the behavior of a NAND gate. It is rather behavior of a uh, AND gate. And let me just uh, kind of draw that, which is we typically say, hey, you know, when we are tying this to high voltage, 
then you know there is high voltage here and the led is connected let's say here so the led grows so when i press the button in case of an and gate the led is supposed to glow but what we have here is the nand gate so why after pressing the two buttons uh, am i having the effect of turning on the light and the answer to that is the way the buttons are here well they are essentially by default connected uh, or rather uh, let's say okay let me not complicate things so the idea is that the buttons are actually connected to ground and so when i press those when i close the so both of them are driven to zero or lower voltage and then this goes to one so that is why when i press both the buttons you know one and then second one when i press both of them uh, you know we have the led going on all right so this was then a very simple demo i can make things you know arbitrarily complicated but right now let me just replace uh, this with essentially let's say uh, let's do an and gate so i'll go to and gate just put it here and connect this now this is a very simple circuit you can make it very complex by having different gates and so i'm going to just go ahead and upload it and it is uploaded almost there we'll see that the red led is on now and i need to press both the buttons to be able to turn it off and then the scenario here right now is something like so So this is like button one and this then is button two and when i press both of them i drive them to ground and when i drive them to ground i'm driving them to zero and as a result there is a zero here all right so that should you know convey or convince you as to why by default uh, you know the led is on right now in case of an and gate and when i press both the inputs it turns off all right so with that we're at the end of the simple demo we'll start off with you know graphical representation of circuits and then slowly go on to understanding how to go about implementing those using an hdl language like the wet log all right so with this i'll see you in the course